Welcome to the UFO Woman Show. I'm your host, Melissa Kennedy. <laughs> so today is our very first show, and I'm so excited, but I'm equally excited about our first guest, Mr. Kevin Briggs. <laughs> So Kevin is not only an author of The Spiritual Consciousness, A Personal Journey, but he's also an experiencer, and he's come here today to share with us some of his uh, contact with extraterrestrials and his experiences with consciousness. So Kevin, how are you? I'm fine. How are you, Melissa? Wonderful, wonderful. So let's start by just talking about you, what your career has been, what your background is, and just kind of give our audience a little feel of what you have been doing. Okay, well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for inviting me on your show. Absolutely. It's a great opportunity to uh, talk about my book, and I do enjoy talking about it now, and it does have a message, so thank you again for inviting me on your show. My pleasure, my pleasure. Uh, my book started, I was um, about three years old, and uh, I had a an experience where my mother had engaged a photographer to come and take a family photograph to put in the family album. And uh, the photographer arrived, I was duly washed, had my hair combed, and the photographer lifted me up onto a table so he had a, a better vantage point, an elevated position. And uh, from that elevated position, as a three-year-old, I looked around the room and not only was it an elevated position, but I knew then that I was conscious and I was conscious again in another physical. Oh. And that was my first recollection of being conscious at the age of three. So when you say consciousness, are you referring to an out-of-body experience? Would you explain it that way? or uh, I would explain it as we, there are two sides to us. There's our spiritual side and then there's a physical side and the two join together. Nice. Uh, as a, uh, a young boy, I was aware from that age uh, that there were two sides to us. Did it scare you? Do no, you I just accepted it. I was, uh, I was quite happy with it. Uh, and bearing in mind, I thought it's just normal. You yeah. Know, so it was normal for me. Normal so for you. Normal right. for me. Maybe yeah. not for the rest of us, but. <laughs> Maybe not, but uh, yeah, normal that's... for me, yeah. So, so it started at a very early age. Very, very early. Um, so take us through. I, I have read your book, by the way. Good, good. Did you and, enjoy it? Oh my gosh, yes. This is honestly the best nonfiction book I have ever read. It was just filled with the most wonderful details. When you described uh, things like your grandmother's house, um, just uh, all the little details that you took us through in your journey, I felt like I was there. Good, good. So, so this book is just unbelievable. Um, it, it really opens your mind to a lot of you know, unusual uh, things that maybe we haven't thought of. Um, but in, in a way that is his personal story. So it just hit home for me. It was one of those books I couldn't put down, didn't want to put down, so I highly recommend it. But Kevin, you know, you started your book out with starting as, as a young boy, a three-year-old. And then you, you went into some other major events that happened to you as a child. Can you go into that with us, some of your experiences? Yes, I can do. My first experience of meeting two of the higher conscious beings, their names are Art and D. I was eight years old at the time. I was having a weekly bath. Not quite sure <laughs> how hygienic that was, but uh, the rest of the <laughs> The rest of the time we were sponged down with a soap and water. Uh, but uh, uh, I was having that weekly bath, I was in the bathroom on my own, and I felt a change in the vibration in the room, a change in the frequency. I was always able to detect these frequencies. And explain uh, that to us for a minute, for uh, our audience that maybe doesn't know what that means. Okay. What, what would that mean How would exactly? I explain that? Then? Let me see. I would say that uh, um, very similar to radio frequencies. Okay. When you have a dial on the radio, you tune into the different frequencies. And I believe that our brains are receptors for those frequencies. Okay. And I'm able to tap into some of the higher frequencies. Uh, nice. So I felt that while I was sat in the bath. I felt this uh, change in the uh, vibration within the bathroom. And two beings appeared at the side of me. Oh, to, my gosh. To the right-hand side. Did it scare you? It frightened me to death. <laughs> Was, I'm, I'm picturing myself in, in the bath at eight years old, and, and that would be ter epic. Terrified, I was yes. Terrified, yes. Were you thinking maybe you were falling asleep, or no? No, I was uh, again because I felt the change in the vibration in the room, and there was a slight drop in temperature as well, which very often uh, they coincide together. 
Uh, so I was aware of these vibrational frequencies before, but I hadn't had anybody actually materialize mm. and to do that. And they were slightly elevated off the floor. There was one male, one female, both very attractive, very attractive. Uh, long blonde shoulder length hair, both of them, deep blue eyes, and they Mortics? wore- Vortex? Uh, they, they tell me now afterwards uh, that they, they are actually Arcturians. Oh, okay. They're a fifth dimensional being and they um, come from Andromeda. Oh. So that's what they tell me. So, and they say that I'm part of their extended family, only that oh, I live nice. here in the third dimension, and they live in the fifth dimension. And okay. The, and the only difference between the dimensions is the frequencies of cells that the cells vibrate at. And that's what makes a difference. So a third dimension being versus a fifth dimension being, you're saying it's a difference in their vibrational level? Yes. Hmm. So if I wanted to ascend to a fifth dimension, what would I have to do as a human being? You would have to raise your vibrational frequency. We all right. vibrate at a certain frequency. Right. And if you can raise that vibrational level, which I believe that's what they've done with me, so I'm able to communicate with them in many different modalities of contact. Um, but they, uh, t to continue with that particular story, they, uh, they were speaking to one another uh, hmm. Not to me, but about me. Oh, and the, a little awkward. Uh, and was, I'm, sat <laughs> there ter I'm sat there terrified, yeah. and uh, they're speaking about me. And uh, the but, female said to the male, uh, is this the boy? And the male said, yes, it is. And then the female said, are you sure this is the boy? He says, yes, I'm sure. And then she said, well, look at him, he's small. <laughs> He's, he's uneducated, right. and he's frightened by our presence. And she was correct. I was terrified. Wow. There was some other conversation, and he said, yes, this is a boy. I will guide him. I will teach him. There was some other conversation after that, but I don't remember that. And then they stayed for a couple of minutes, and then they disappeared. I was so frightened, I just stayed in the bath. I didn't get out. The water went cold. Oh, I was going to say, you're I freezing was, now. I was freezing. <laughs> I was shivering. And my mother came in to find out why I was still in the bath. And oh, no. I said, uh, there were two beings appeared in the bath next to me, and they were talking about me, and I was frightened to get out. And what was her reaction? She because said, it was just your imagination, Just Kevin. your imagination. So she dragged me off, and then we went on with our evening as normal. But that was my first encounter with Orton D, and I've had contact with them and others now all my life. And I'm now 65, so wow. that's uh, about 57 years, if my math's correct. So, wow. Uh, um, yeah, and, and so, I wouldn't have spoken out about it right. had it not been for uh, about three years ago. Bearing in mind, I've had interaction with them all my life, and uh, uh, I got up about three years ago in the middle of the night just to go to the bathroom, and uh, I came back into the bedroom, and there's a bright light outside the, the window. The light then came in through the window, the whole bedroom lit up like a myriad of butterflies, just bright, mm. sparkly light everywhere. Oh, beautiful. And then Orton D materialized at the bottom of the bed. Wow. So after pleasantries, um, I asked what was the reason for their visit, bearing in mind I'm used to seeing them, interacting with them. So nothing on you. were scared. Not scared, not right. happy to see them. Yeah. And uh, they said, Kevin, we want you to talk about your experiences with us, your lifelong experiences. Hmm. And we want you to write a book. In fact, you will write two books. And I remember saying to them, I said, well, I don't mind talking about my experiences, but I'm not a writer. And uh, they said that uh, uh, we will continue to guide you, we will continue to teach you, and we will give you some information to include in the book. So when you're saying talking, are you saying like how we talk or telepathically? No, it's telepathic that? communication. That's what they use. Uh, right. But fortunately, they've over the years, they've taught me how to do that. I'm quite adept at it now, yes. Very nice, yeah. very nice. So, okay, so we've started out as a three-year-old. We've had an experience as an eight-year-old. Um, I know you talked a lot in your book about how close you were with your family. Uh, you referred to your mother and father quite a bit. Your father was in a wheelchair, correct? Tell me, tell me a little bit about that story. Uh, well, my father was always disabled from when I was born. Mm -hmm. He had uh, multiple sclerosis. Uh, so I never saw him walk, but we were a tight-knit family. There was my, uh, obviously my father, my mother, and my brother Michael. And uh, unfortunately, me, uh, my father died when I was only nine years old. Mm. But um, 
we were a close family and we still remain to be a close family and I still communicate with my what we perceive as deceased father because uh, my understanding is now that we have uh, they live at the higher vibrational frequencies now without a physical in I, their next life in their next so no, they've passed. Not, no not ne they're past right okay but the it, there's an in-between stage. In so the stage. now, in this stage where there are higher vibrational frequency existing. Okay. If they choose to come back into the physical, then they can come back into a, a lower dimension, like the third dimension. Or oh, wow. Okay, so time out. <laughs> I'm going to try to get our audience up to speed here. All right. I know what you're talking about. This is obviously what I do uh, for a living. Oh, okay. So let, let's bring our audience to the ones that maybe aren't familiar with what you're speaking of. Um, we do know that there are multiple dimensions in the universe. Uh, we live in a one-dimensional, basically, uh, world. Our eyes, our organs can only really see up to 3D. Um, so when you're talking about transferring over to other dimensions. Are you talking about after we pass, after we die, that we are passing into other dimensions, correct? Right. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Can, if, Our if, soul, our consciousness. Perhaps if I can explain, give you an example of something that Art showed me when I was oh, uh, 17 or 18. Uh, I know that uh, uh, I was... Um, uh, given the ability to be able to travel outside of my body, separate okay. the consciousness from the physical, and just go and travel. And I would do that as a child, usually on a Sunday, to go and visit my grandparents, yes. who lived 70 miles away. That was in your book quite yes. a bit. Yes. And I love that, because I was close to my grandparents. Right, okay. So I can relate. <laughs> well, we weren't able to travel over to see them, because it was quite expensive at that time. We'd probably go once or twice a year. Uh, so on a Sunday, I would just relax, open my mind, yeah. and my uh, conscious energy would travel over to their home, I would uh, enter the home, and then I would sit upstairs in uh, the master bedroom upstairs, and then they had a dressing room, and I would sit in the dressing room looking down through the floor, wow. and it was just opaque. I could see my grandmother usually in the uh, kitchen cooking on a Sunday, and my grandfather sat in his usual chair, either reading the newspaper or watching TV. And it gave me great comfort to see them. And I always wondered when I sat there, uh, what would they see if they came upstairs? <laughs> right, would they see you? Or? Would they see me? I didn't know the answer then, but I know the answer now. What they would have seen, there would have been a, a pure conscious energy orb. It would have oh. been four to six inches across, orangey, yellow in colour, slightly vibrating. That's hmm. my conscious energy. That's your conscious energy. Yeah. So it's almost like your remote viewing in a way. Uh, very similar to remote viewing, okay. very similar, yes. But I think it's one step further than remote viewing. It's actually separating that uh, consciousness. Great. Okay, so let's take a step back here just a second. Um, you were a mili you were in the military, or your brother was in the military. My brother was in the military. Brother was in the military. Yeah. Okay, and that was an interesting story because you you mentioned in your book that your mother had a friend who right. came over. Oh, yes, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that story and how that's an interesting story about right, your brother okay. in the in the navy? Uh, yes, my brother he came home one day and he said that. Uh, he, he, um, we'd already been told by my mum's friend, Mrs. Seed, that one of her sons was, was going to be in the Navy. And I think it was on that day when... Uh, and she was told how, though? Oh, she was a medium. She was a she medium. medium, okay. So she was given the information as a medium, and uh, she said that one of your sons was going to apply for the Navy, but he would be turned down three times. Oh, my gosh. And on, or twice, and on the third time, he would be accepted. So, and then on that specific day, I think all the day after, my brother came home and said that he was considering joining the Navy. <laughs> after, <laughs> after, after that, she after said, that. Oh so, my gosh, and she read tea leaves, right? She did, she did. Is oh that, did I put that in the book? I forget. Yes, no, I yes, you, you talked about reading <laughs> yes, tea leaves. Was, That's the first time I've heard of that. Oh, right, she was yeah. a good friend of my mother. In fact, uh, I, anyway, my brother did, he applied for the Navy, he, he got turned down, he was unfit. Oh, so, uh, okay. So I used to uh, joke about it at the time. and then So he applied again six months later, and he still wasn't fit enough. So uh, he applied again a third time, and he got in. And, and she had just been told that. And she'd already been told that. <laughs> but then wow. I remember another occasion, I don't know whether this is in the book or not, but she, she said, uh, one of your sons is going to break his leg. So oh. my mother phoned me, and she said, Kevin, are you okay? She says, yeah, I'm fine. Um, 
So I've been speaking to Mrs. Seed and uh, she said, one of my sons is going to break his leg. I said, well, I'm fine, it must be Michael. So she phoned Michael and he'd broken his ankle oh, <laughs> the day before playing squash. Oh my goodness. You know, so she was, uh, she was quite attuned to the high levels of consciousness and contact herself. But, wow. Um, um, so I suppose to some degree, I had a, a I just accepted that as normal. Just normal. Yeah, just normal. Yeah. Normal. So you grew up in Britain, yeah. correct? Um, you went through your school age years. You, you did the whole, um, you know, being moved around a bit. You talked about that in the book. Uh, your father passed away at age nine. nine. So your mother moved the family, correct, to another house. Yes, that's correct. So was, that, was it hard moving a lot? It, it, it wasn't actually because we went back to the same area where we actually moved from the area to a, a house that was uh, purposely built for a disabled person. Okay. It was on one level, it had the wider corridors, the larger bathrooms to facilitate a wheelchair. Right, since so, your dad was So when we, in a my dad okay. passed, we then moved back to the old neighborhood. So oh. it was an upheaval, obviously, him passing. Kind of like uh, returning. <laughs> yeah, but then we returned to an area, uh, similar friends, same friends, and yeah. we made new friends. So, and you uh, stayed there through high school, or? Uh, yes, yeah, stayed there through high school, and then okay. left, and then went to work at the, uh, I got a job at the University of Leeds as a technician. Okay. And uh, I worked there for about 11 years. And then from there, I, uh, I left there and joined the uh, police force in England. And I was a police officer for uh, 20 years. Oh. Uh, then, uh, Did that influence your career, your, your experiences? No, because I didn't talk about them. Didn't talk about no. it at all with the police force? No, I decided that uh, uh, I tried to find more information. And as I say, when I was 17, 18, I asked Art. And I said, I know there's a lot more information here. Can you show me some more information? Can and Ort was one of the beings? Ort was the male. The male, yeah. okay. So one evening I went to bed, I relaxed, I opened my mind, I held my hand out, and I asked Ort to come and show me some more. He took hold of my hand, I left my body, I looked down, I could see my body asleep, and uh, we wow. went out through the window. And I was three stories up, we flew around the subdivision, and wow. then came back in through the window. I woke up the following morning thinking, well, that was cool, Yeah. but I wasn't certain whether I was dreaming or whether it was real. It kind so, of sounds like Peter Pan. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it, it really does. does. So, it sounds like a story. And I hadn't heard, heard of anybody doing that before. So, yeah. so I, uh, I thought the second evening, I'll, I'll do the same again. So I relaxed. Uh, I opened my mind. I asked Art to come. I held out my hand. He came. He took hold of my hand. I left mm. my body. I looked down. I could see it. I was asleep. We went out through the window. And uh, we oh. flew further this time. We went down into Leeds City Centre. And I saw the university where I worked, the hospital, the town hall, some of the buildings I recognised. And then we came back and came back into the window. And my body was asleep. I went down oh. into my body and uh, he left. So the second morning I woke up, I'm still not convinced that but, I'm not dreaming or, right, right. or sleepwalking. So, and I'm a little concerned because we, I'm three stories up and it's <laughs> yeah. concrete pavement below. I couldn't know. do that. I have a severe fear of heights. So yeah, three stories up, not good for me. So what I decided to do for the third night running, I asked him again to come and show me some more. Uh, so he did, he came, he took hold of my hand, I looked down, I could see my body asleep. Oh, Bearing wow. in mind, I'm used to doing this on my own, but not doing it with someone else. With somebody else, else. Okay. right. That's a whole uh, different ball game. It is, totally, yes, and it was quite yeah. very interesting to be able to do that. But then um, I said to him, look, I'm quite happy doing this, but I don't want to go out through the window because I'm still not happy whether I'm sleepwalking <laughs> the window or whatever. Little, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm visualizing glass and, so you know. I, so I said, can we go out through the roof? So we went out through the roof and then we flew around and we came back in through the roof. So I woke up the following morning really thinking, well, that, that's three times I've done that. That's cool. Yeah. And I continued to travel with him for a, nearly a two-year period. Now, him is your spirit guide. Yes, that's art, the fifth dimensional okay. being, yes. Okay, uh, okay. I think we have different names for them. It depends how you want to identify with them. Oh, it sounds like a guardian angel type of they are there description too. in yeah. a way. And I think we all have them. We just don't connect with them or we don't talk about them. We don't talk because about them. Because um, our culture doesn't allow us to do that. And he was not a family member of yours no, or anything no. like that? The only thing that he said to me, I was part of their, his extended family Oh, from that point oh. of view. Interesting. Um, but I know that... Uh, 
uh, we were talking about deceased members of the family. <laughs> right, right. I remember on one occasion, Art came to me and he said, uh, Kevin, I'm going to take you somewhere special tonight. Will you come with me? I said, I'll go anywhere you want to go. Yeah, sure. So he took hold of my hand. We left out through the roof. Wow. Does that feel weird, by the way, going up through the roof? No. You, you don't feel no, it? No, it's just, it was all normal to me. It's just, wow. it's just that total separation of consciousness. Okay. And you leave your physical behind. So there's no feeling. There's, there's no, no physical feeling, feeling. No physical feeling, no. Okay. You're just aware. I'm just trying to, you know, yeah. trying to paint the picture here yeah, for okay, the audience yeah, and yes. for myself. I suppose it is difficult because a lot of people don't talk about it. Yeah. And I wouldn't have talk, spoke about it, but... Uh, uh, unless they, like I said earlier, they asked me to do that. So right, uh, right. But, so, so they're 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 visiting you more regularly. It kind of sounds like at this point. Yes, yes, quite okay. regular. And uh, he said on this occasion, I'm going to take somewhere special. So we left by the roof, and I could see the earth getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And uh, we were going, you're in ah, space. Are you uh, <laughs> up in space? Just see the earth. Oh my goodness. Very small. And then we took what I describe as a right hand turn. We actually went into a higher dimension. And when I went into that dimension with Art, uh, there was a line of 30 people stood there. 30 people? 30 people. And at the head of the line was my deceased father. And he oh. was stood up. And I had never seen him standing. Because he'd been in a wheelchair. Oh, I was in a wheelchair. Life. So that was amazing. But the, oh, my goodness. The, uh, as I walked up to him, he said, Kevin, oh, that's, that's please, emotional. Please, I mean, that's, pleased to you see know. you, you know. Yeah. But the, he said, I'm going to introduce you to uh, 30 members of your family going back over 300 years. Oh, my. So he, we started down the line. But the feeling of love was tremendous from this group. Absolutely tremem tremendous. It was just overwhelming. Right. So then as I walked down the first 15, I was introduced to them all. We oh, spoke about their last physicals that they had. And then when I got to the second 15, they were just pure conscious energy orbs. They didn't uh, have any physical, physical that was showing to me. So, okay. So, but I could still speak to them telepathically. Okay. And they showed me images of their past incarnation. Oh, wow. Uh, and I could still communicate with them. So that was fascinating. And uh, I did that for uh, quite a while with, with Art himself. But I got so confident in doing it, I was able to do it on my own. Okay. And I did it for over a period of two years. I would wow. regularly go and visit them. But uh, every time I went to see them, uh, again, this tremendous feeling of love, sure. they wanted me to stay there with oh, them. Oh, it's not your time. Yeah, and I said that. Oh, we're like, <laughs> <laughs> I said that. maybe we're having a well, little moment here. I don't know, maybe telepathy's at play. <laughs> yes, I said that. I said, no, I'm enjoying my physical. Yeah. Uh, I know when my physical expires, as it were, uh, you'll still be here, and I'll come back and visit come you again. Come back and visit. So, at uh, will. At will. Will, yes, at yeah, will. will. Okay. So, so then I, uh, I went. I decided that one day at work to go back and actually tell them that, rather than just not turn up. So on that evening, I relaxed, opened my mind, and I travelled up to that higher dimension, and I spoke to them, all thirty of them, and they still wanted me to stay. And again, Aww. that feeling of love was tremendous. Yeah. But I said, I, I can't stay. I've got things I need to do. I'm enjoying my physical, and I know you're here when my physical expires. Uh, and we will, I will come back and see you then. And I've never been back to see them since. Really? No. So, but and I'm that not, was how many years ago? Oh, I would be 18. Oh, oh you were 18 yeah, years 50, old at the time? Yeah, oh, wow, okay. Like, yeah, 50, so it has been a while. A, lo a long while, yes. Okay. But I know they're there. Yeah. And if I want to communicate it with an individual, I can do. But uh, uh, I don't need to. I'm enjoying the physical. I'm enjoying so, being here. I'm, I'm curious. I mean, you know, you, you've had this just exceptional childhood. I mean, it, it's unlike any childhood most people have. So you, you have all of these ex really special experiences. Do you think that that maybe influenced your decision to go into becoming a police officer, seeking the truth, doing justice, doing good? Uh, no, think? not really. No. no? <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> no, I, uh, I joined the police force because I enjoyed being in, uh, a technician at the university, but I'd gone as far as I could go. And, and I fancied a change in direction. And uh, I, uh, I was just looking for different things to do. Something different to do. And uh, I looked at the police force. I thought, that sounds interesting. So I applied and I was successful. And I enjoyed being a police officer for 20 years, 19, I got, 20 years. I got to ask the question. As a police officer, did you ever have any UFO sightings? As a police officer? Oh, that's yeah. a good one. Um, <laughs> No, I didn't. No? No, no, oh, no, no. I was I hoping. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I got to that stage yet. When I was 14, I had a paper round, and I saw UFOs all the time. Really? Yes, as I came out of the house, 
at 14 to go and collect my newspapers, a UFO would appear. Really? As Were you near Suffolk at all? No, no, in oh. uh, Wakefield, Wakefield. Okay, Wakefield. Okay. okay. All right. And uh, a UFO would always appear as I walked out the door. Wow. And then a second UFO would appear. The two would uh, fly together, follow me around the paper round, and then, what? Uh, and then when I'd finished the paper, I thought, is this in the book? I can't no, remember. Oh, I, okay. No, I don't think <laughs> so. I'm like, I was saving that for my second book. Yeah, the, oh, oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> All right. Well, um, so, so it would follow you around. Do you think that was your spirit guides, maybe? Or do you think it was a completely different extraterrestrial? No, it, was a, it was a group of uh, uh, eight extraterrestrials that uh, okay. I've, I've, I've been introduced to through Orton D. And through Orton them. D are. Okay. Uh, uh, members of this group of eight, yes. The so, group of eight. Yeah. And I know that's significant. We're going to talk about that here in just a little bit. Um, so, okay, so you're basically an adult now. You're, you're going into the police academy. Um, there's a wonderful little story, though, that you talk about your, your now wife, Sandy, and how the two of you were dating. And it was actually a very sweet love story in here. I really appreciated it. You want to share a little bit of that with us and how you met your wife and how you got married and all that wonderful stuff? <laughs> okay, well, I, I met Sandy at the university. She was a, a technician. Uh, she worked in psychology for many years and uh, became the superintendent of psychology uh, at the end of her career, as it were, and uh, before she retired. Uh, but when I met her, uh, obviously I asked her out, we went out a few times, and then uh, I decided that I wanted to uh, ask her to marry me. <laughs> and I thought, well, I'd better tell her about the outer body experiences, the fact that I can see yeah. spirits, and there's more to me than just, <laughs> just the regular things. So I thought it wouldn't be fair to get married, then she finds out later. So I, uh, I actually told her. And she just uh, accepted it and said, well, if you see any spirits, I want to see them as well. Let me know. Oh, and, great, uh, great. So uh, the love story continued. Yes, yeah, so and we're still married good. to this day. Still so. married to this yeah. day. And I know she has also helped some with this book, She correct? has helped with the book. Uh, she designed the cover and uh, nice. helped me with the grammar and things like that. Yeah, so, uh, very yeah, nice, very, very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Well, okay, so so we're still in Britain at this point. Yes. We're, we're still in the UK. Um Tell me at what point do you decide that you're going to be moving to the United States? Okay, well, my wife wanted to move to the United States uh, years earlier. She was actually offered a job at, uh, I think, Penn State University. We discussed it, but then I was happy in the police force, and uh, uh, we decided that we would come to the United States at a later date. I wanted to get my police pension first, and then I, I would feel a little more secure, and then we could go anywhere. So I got to the retirement age, I retired, and then I asked Sandy where she wanted to go, and she <laughs> said, let's go to the United States. So uh, nice. we ended up in Florida, which where uh, we currently live now. So uh, Okay, cool. So you moved to Florida. Obviously, you're done with your police career. Um, where does your career take you at that point, now that you're here in Florida? Oh, okay, well, we, uh, um, we went through the visa process, uh, which we were successful. Uh, we started a small business in real estate, uh, which was successful. Uh, and then... Um, uh, once we uh, got the visas through, uh, we got the citizenship through, then we sold the business and I just sell real estate now. So I've been selling real estate now for uh, 19 years and that's what wow. I do. But I work from home. Yeah. It's not like, you know, a nine to five job. Um, it's very relaxing and I enjoy selling houses. So, so that's enjoy what I do selling, now, yeah. selling houses. Well, you're in the central Florida area, correct? And uh, you have still had some contact, even in the what in the last few years with yes yes the contacts have been um building more and more in the in the past few years uh, and in relation to uh, they've been asking me to uh, share my story they've been giving me more information uh they are wanting to uh, as i said i I've, I've met with a group of eight ets uh, uh different species uh, they're actually eight ambassadors. They, eight ambassadors. They represent a galactic federation, shall we say. Hmm. Interesting, because I've always had a theory that there was some sort of an intergalactic council. Uh, I don't know if I just had that intuitive uh, thought process or, or what, because I've had that thought for quite a while. Tell us about this this council of eight. What what extraterrestrial races is this including? Okay, well, if we start with Orton D, they're okay. part of that. Okay, they're two of the ambassadors. They are guides and teachers. Uh, they are Arcturian, as they say. They look like me and you, very attractive. Tall. Tall. Oh, thank you, by the way. <laughs> 
<laughs> little compliment there. <laughs> uh, lo long I'll take it when I can get oh. it, you know. <laughs> uh, long blonde hair. Okay. And, uh, uh, and then there will be Zark. He's a small grey, again an ambassador. Okay. He's an engineer, a mathematician. He has three offspring. He has a sense oh, offspring. Offspring. Now, okay. I don't know whether they call them children or what. I've never okay. asked, but I know he has the offspring because he told me. And now, greys meaning one of the shorter yeah, three the foot. Short, the small greys, yes. Okay. But he has a sense of humour. Does he? Yeah, he does. He, he moves my wife's personal items around the house. <laughs> And Just randomly, yeah. here we go. <laughs> she'll, she'll do a place, set it on the table, and he, she'll turn around and go back into the kitchen. Uh, and he's moved the knife and forks off the place, set in the But table. yet we can't see them no. consciously. Uh, well, I well, can. Well, you can. I can, yes. Okay, the rest of us, not so much. You, you, when they are there, you'll feel, oh, I feel a change in the vibrational frequency within the room. But I did ask uh, Zach why he moved my wife's personal items. And he said he, said he, he liked teasing her. Oh! <laughs> he thought it was funny, yeah. but there was a serious side to it, and the serious side was to let her know that we are here. We are here. We are amongst you. I love uh, that. So, uh, but I remember without being scary. Without being scary, right. yes. Right. My wife accepts the fact that they've introduced themselves to her. She's aware that they are there. Um, so it's, uh, it, I couldn't do this without, my, uh, without the support of Sandy anyway. Great. So, now, does she have some of the same abilities as you? or Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. Uh, but she is aware that they're there because they, I remember on one occasion, she shouted to me, she said, Kevin, Kevin, that's what? <laughs> she says, uh, have you been in the uh, uh, um, master closet? I said, no, why? <laughs> she said, uh, well, come here, come here, come and have a look. So I went in, and when Sandy takes the shoes off, she'll just take them off in the big closet and just leave yeah. them where she's like everybody does. And uh, they were all lined up in that oh. neat line next to the baseball. Can you like send that. them over to my house? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would want my, my, my closets organized, my cabinets. I Yeah, I, I need some help there. That would be cool. But I asked him... Uh, uh, how he did that? I said, did you yeah. pick them up physically? And he said, no, we, we moved, I moved the atoms in space, time, dimension. So they're not doing this? Not picking it up and moving it, no. no. They're just altering the... Wow. I mean, that's just amazing. But, uh, wow. And then other things that have happened. In fact, they showed Sandy a craft. Uh, okay, I think we have a picture of that, don't oh, we? Uh, yes, I did send it to you. Yes, you you yes. sent us a picture yeah. of that. Maybe we could uh, take a look at that picture and you can explain to the audience here. Um, yes. So this is taken where? Okay, that's at the back of our home. We have five acres. Nice. And behind us at that time, uh, there weren't any other uh, properties. Uh, there's one being built now. But uh, um, there's a story, if we've got time, for I can tell you yes. about that particular craft. Please do, please the, do. Um, what we normally do at home, Sandy gets up first, she feeds the dogs, checks the chickens, and then goes outside and has a, a cup of tea. I get up and uh, I make myself a coffee. Uh, and go and sit outside, and that's the view that we have. On this particular morning, I thought to myself, I'll go and speak, see if I can speak to the group, the Council of Eight. And uh, so I opened my mind, I relaxed, I put the information out there, and I, I wasn't able to contact them. But I contacted a small craft that was in the area, and in the craft were about five or six small greys. Now the guy that was piloting the craft, his name is Tia, I've met him before, yeah. he's a pilot, he's a technician, and uh, I asked what he was doing here, and he said, Kevin, we were in the area, and uh, we came over to see where you lived. Uh, so I'll find, so we had a little bit of conversation, and they said, we'll have to go now, because we're off our designated flight path, and we need to get back onto that. So they left, we said goodbye. Uh, nothing unusual for me, talking to higher conscious beings, being able to do that. But then the... Uh, um, I, I got dressed, I, I made my coffee, I went outside, Sandy was sat there having a, a drink of tea, and she says, oh, you missed the most beautiful rainbow this morning. Yeah. I said, oh, so did you get a photograph of it? She says, yes, I did. And she said it went from one fence to the other fence. And then, uh, then she says, you're not going to believe what happened next. I said, no. I said, oh, a UFO appeared under the rainbow. Under the rainbow. Under so the when rainbow. we look at that picture, is it the, the black the, the section? The blur at the right-hand okay, side. Maybe we could zoom in on that and, and take a good look. Okay. So it, it, tell me what's happening. It looks a little blurry there. Is it cloaking or what exactly is happening? I suspect that... Uh, when Sandy told me she went to take the photograph, she was taking the photograph of the rainbow, and then uh, she put the iPad down and the craft appeared. So then she lifted oh. it and clicked. And in that moment in time, I suspect it was either cloaking or moving off at speed, and that's why it's blurred. But if you ask Sandy, she saw it clearly. It was a clear disc. A disc-shaped yeah, UFO. Correct. 
But the interesting fact was, when we looked at the time on the photograph, it was 8.30. 8.30 was the time when I was speaking to Tia and the small craft with the five or six occupants. Oh, wow. So at the same time the craft appears in your backyard, you're having a conversation tele telepathically yeah. with the, the, the entity that's, yes. that's in that UFO. Yes. Wow. And the reason why they've done that is for confirmation. Okay. Very often they give you... I ask for confirmation when I receive information, uh, and that's the way um, we understand the communication. But this was twofold. One, it was to show Sandy a craft. It was an right. extension of moving small things around the home, so okay. she's aware that they're there. And then it was confirmation for me in respect that uh, I was actually speaking to them telepathically wow. and, uh, at the same time. So a, a, a dual confirmation there. Yeah. So, and, and they're part of this council of eight that you're speaking no, of? No, no, T, no, T is, is just... Not? No, okay. he's just a pilot and a technician, okay. and uh, he was just transporting uh, a group of people from A to B. I don't know where he was going, I didn't ask him. But uh, Wow, and this is in Claremont? Yes, that was in Claremont, yes, that was. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so let's continue this conversation about the Council of Eight, because this is very interesting, and it's going to lead into our final discussion. Um, you, you've mentioned a couple of entities. What are some other ones that are in this Council of Eight? Okay, well, we've mentioned Orton D, Zark, uh, and then there's Anna. She's a blue avian type. Uh, bird features, very tight blue feathers, and she has a, a bill, but it's more like a, a duck bill. <laughs> it's, it's like that, but smaller. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's an empath, she's a healer, and uh, she's um, um, part of the Council of Eight, yes. Part uh, of the Council yes. of Eight. Yes, and then okay. the, the one after that would be um, Ra. He's mm. the leader of the group. Ra, Ra is the leader. Yeah. He's uh, Anunnaki, he's a watcher. A uh, very powerful being, very powerful. Uh, and he, he the lead, Anunnaki, that's, he, that's he leads fun. the group. Right, and right. And then the one after that will be Targ. He's a tall grey, and he um, re is responsible for the security of this quadrant of the galaxy, he tells me. But he's also responsible for the security of the Council of Eight, the group of eight, the eight ambassadors. Okay. Uh, and then after that, there will be Chica. He's a mantis being. Uh, like praying mantis? Like a praying mantis, but tall. Wow. Uh, very tall. I always thought there was something special about them. And they... I really did. He's, he's very intelligent. He doesn't have a sense of humor because I asked him once if he was an entomologist. <laughs> 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 I thought it was funny, but yeah, it is. But he, but he didn't take he it. He didn't take it. Oh, no, he gave it. Okay, it's so, like woo. So I know. I know. Uh, and then the last one will be Orla. She's a tall white, and I okay. believe that she's an astrobiologist. I believe, so there's so. some females and, and yeah. males in this yeah. group of eight, and you have shared some information with me about this Council of Eight that's coming up very soon. Uh, you've given me a specific date. Do you want to elaborate on this, this big disclosure uh, date? I can do. Uh, if we've got time, I can tell you how I received the information, if that's of interest yes. to you. Yes, let's okay. do that. Um, this, earlier this year, February the 1st this year, uh, I was woken up by the sound of a large craft above my home. Normally they're, they're fairly quiet or you just hear a humming noise. This was very loud and uh, I looked at the clock and it was uh, 1, 1, 1 a.m. Hmm. So it's February the 1st at 1, 1, 1 a.m. I'd only been in bed a couple of hours. I was fast asleep and uh, they gave me the message that they uh, wanted to meet with our government representatives at the United Nations hmm. and uh, I... Uh, so I, w I need a confirmation of that. So uh, I asked them, what about the uh, um, date and time? And they said, I oh, will give you that later. So I repeated the message back to them. I went into the bathroom, and outside of the bathroom, there's a street lamp. And I said, I repeated the message back. I said, if this is correct, can you turn that street light off? And the street light went off immediately. Oh, so my that goodness. was confirmation for me. Absolutely. I got confirmation on the front end with February the 1st, 111. Very often there's synchronicity with the messages that I receive. And the I'm, numbers, too. Uh, the numbers, yes. Mm -hmm. And then on the back end, I got confirmation by them turning the street light off. Wow. So, that, so I was happy with that. So I went back to bed. About quarter to eight in the morning, I was woken by someone jumping on our bed twice. I thought my dog had come into the bedroom, but yeah. they're not allowed in there. But when I looked, there was nobody there. But they woke me up by jumping on the bed. They gave me the second part of the message, which was the date and time when they wanted to meet with our United Nations in New York. So I repeated the whole message back to them. Bear in mind, it's daylight now. And I said, if this message is correct, can you turn that street light on? 
and the street light came on immediately. So that was confirmation. Three confirmations. Yeah. And I always ask for confirmation uh, when I receive uh, information, if it, especially if it's telepathic, because we need to know, I need to know that it's coming from them and it's not, not my imagination. Right, right. I can give you another example, which is a very good one. I was sat by my pool one evening and they gave me some information about the quantum unified field theory. I knew nothing about that. I know a little bit about it now. But at that time, I'm just sat there enjoying myself, relaxing. And they gave me the information, and the information said that uh, your scientist's understanding of the quantum unified field theory is correct <laughs> with the weak force, the strong force, the electromagnetic force, and the gravitational force. However, there's a fifth interaction, and that is consciousness, consciousness. itself. If your scientists include consciousness within their own theory, unified field theory, then they will have a better understanding. Hmm. So they gave me all that information in a split second. The whole formula. Oh, the whole thing. So I'm just sat there and I said, look, you've just given me all this information. I need confirmation that it's come from you and it's not my imagination. Can you show me a craft as confirmation? And a craft appeared straight away, immediately. So I went in the house to get Sandy. I said, Sandy, can you come outside? There's a craft here. Wow. I want you to have a look at it. We went outside. A second one appeared. A third one. Seven in total. Just this past February? Uh, 2019? What date was this? I'd have to check my notes uh, for, okay. for the dates but of that one. in 2019? One. Yes, 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 recently, okay. yes. Okay, okay. But I do write these things down when they happen because I can't remember all the information now <laughs> that they're giving me. Well, you have a lot of information. I can see why. <laughs> but the... Um, Anyway, all seven flew silently oh my goodness. over our heads. Disc shapes? Uh, they were or? like all big orb types. Uh, you know, you, when you see them, um, just like a huge orb. Okay. Okay, but they were craft. Okay. I, I know why they, we see that glowing, uh, uh, why we see the glowing when, it, when they're craft. Uh, but uh, they flew directly over our heads, uh, changed angle about 80 degrees, and then they disappeared wow. sequentially uh, oh. as they'd appeared. Uh, so that fast. Was, I mean, they they. No, they all went to the same spot. They came in here. Okay. Went over there, and then they each disappeared at the same spot. Oh wow! All, all the way. Hmm. So that was. Uh, uh, and it was good that Sunday witnessed it. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, so it gave you another eyewitness. Yeah. Of course, you probably didn't get that on camera, did you? No. no. Oh, darn. <laughs> I love the photo that you did share with us, though, with the oh, rainbow okay, okay. in the backyard. That that was really spectacular. Have you had anybody investigate that photo? Anybody no, look at it no. yet? I've that been would out be to a few people. You know, yeah. Just, just out there. To yeah, it's it really it. neat. Yeah. And the it's fact really that neat. Sandy took it, it wasn't me. That's the coolest you know, part. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so. Well, let's get back to the uh, the reveal date that was given to you. It's coming right around the corner. In fact, in about four weeks. Yes, February the 1st, 2020, they told me. They want to meet with the United Nations uh, that these eight ambassadors want to meet with our ambassadors at the United Nations. Our ambassadors, okay. They okay. have asked for a mandate protocol to be in place to be able to receive them. Hmm. In December 2017, I contacted the chairman of uh, Outer Space Affairs Committee, Nicholas Hedman, and asked him if there was a uh, protocol in place to hmm. receive extraterrestrials. Uh, his office did reply, and they said that there was no protocol in place at this time to receive advanced extraterrestrials should hmm. they wish to communicate with the United Nations. I'm, I'm having a little trouble believing that one. No okay. protocol? Ah, well, that's what... That's, <laughs> I mean, wait a minute. I'm sure they have. But <laughs> yeah, that's, exactly. But that's, what they're, that's what they're telling... telling oh, on that particular time, December 2017, right, right. I contacted... I was asked again to contact the... Uh, United Nations uh, just recently and give them the dates yeah. of February the 1st at the United Nations uh, um, and the I wrote again to Nicholas Hedman's office I didn't receive a reply this time mm -hmm. I just received an automated response that they received the email interesting so then I I contacted the Outer Space Affairs Committee in Washington uh, Dr. Dip Ippo and I sent him the same email Hmm. Uh, with the same request. So they have the information, and I'm sure they do have protocols in place because at some point in time in our future, this is going to happen. And uh, I have been told that uh, there will be more and more mass sightings leading up to the reveal. Mass How sightings? Mass sightings. Okay. However, it is dependent on this mandate protocol being implemented uh, and people aware that it's been implemented, then they can make a request to visit with our ambassadors at the United Nations.
detonation. So the man mandated protocol, you're saying to me that we have to have the United Nations agree with the Council of Eight Extraterrestrials agree. Yes. They all have to agree. They all have to agree. And then okay. what we have to do, we have to invite the extraterrestrials right. to as ambassadors to come and meet mm. with the ambassadors at the United Nations. What's your feeling? Do you think that's actually going to happen? No. You Not don't. on February the 1st, no. My uh, personal feeling is no, because we haven't had confirmation of the mandate protocol being implemented. So we need that to be implemented. Uh, once that is done, then yes. And we can reschedule. I can ask them for uh, uh, another date if we want to do that. So February 2nd's been thrown out a couple of times, 2-2-2020, two, two, right, okay. as a mass sighting right, date. Right, okay. Well, I asked them uh, what was important uh, with the date of February the 1st, 2020. And they said, Kevin, uh, it was the February the 2nd that was a significant date. And it was significant because it will be the first dawn of a new humanity. And mm. I thought that was quite profound when they told me that. <laughs> yeah, 2020 so, vision, right? <laughs> but what I suspect <laughs> what will happen now is on February the 1st, 2020, um, because we haven't had confirmation that this mandate protocol is in place, then uh, there will be a mass sighting over New York. And I was mm. recently in New York in August with my wife on a, a vacation, and uh, I was reading a post by a Dr. Joseph Burks, and he's uh, part of the Free Foundation, which is now part of the Contact and Conscious Research Inti Institute. Institute. They've changed right. the name. And I was reading his post on my phone, and it was about experiences like myself who'd had well, a dream. And the dream was that the craft appeared globally over many major cities. Hmm. And I've had that dream myself three Have times you? in my lifetime. Because wow. each time I woke up, I was disappointed it was a dream. <laughs> so on this occasion, I read the post. I think I made a comment, and I put the phone down. I then looked out to the hotel window, and I looked between two skyscrapers. And between hmm. the skyscra skyscrapers, about 15 craft appeared. They formed a pattern. They disappeared, they formed another pattern, and then they disappeared again. Now that oh. to me was confirmation of the post that Dr. Joseph Burks had posted, and then a precursor for the reveal itself. Right. And uh, um, so I'm very confident in the information I've been given because of the confirmations that I received. Oh, multiple and, uh, ones. Uh, multi um, and yeah. over the years, I've had many confirmations. I can tell you many more, but uh, we don't have time today. Yeah. But <laughs> it's just an hour show. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm sitting here trying to imagine what that would be like to have a mass sighting over New York City. Yes. Are we ready? I mean, you and I are ready, but I, is the general public ready for something I like that? I think so, yes. You do? I do, yes. You think uh, we've done enough uh, disclosure up until now that the mass majority of the people won't just freak out on us? I think so, yes. Okay. I think so, because we are getting the information out there. Uh, I'm sharing this information only for a short period of time. And, and I am, too. And you're sharing it, <laughs> yeah. So everybody you know. that's in, involved is sharing the information. We really are, and, and we're trying to get that message out. We're trying to, you know, get the government acknowledgement. Hey, yeah. let's say September 16th was a big day in our history. Yes, it was, yes. The yes, United was, States yeah. government finally acknowledged that UFOs do exist. Yes, yes. That was huge. That was huge, absolutely huge. It should have been yeah. front page news. It should have been, but it was. You know, it was on some papers, I think. Eh, but yeah. Some, not yeah, enough. But, I mean, yeah. it should have been on every news station, every media outlet that there was. It should have been broadcasting that, but... You know, how but that our is. governments, they do know they're here. They, right. You know, um, uh, it's just really confirming it to the general public, and then we can have that transition. And I believe that experiences like myself were here to help with that transition. Absolutely. Because we, I personally have direct contact with the, this group of eight ambassadors, and I know others that do as well. I've had confirmation of several people who have direct contact with these group of eight extraterrestrials. Wow. So uh, hmm. I'm very confident in the information that I've been given. And uh, as I say, we can always reschedule another date. Yeah. But I'm, yeah. I'm hoping that uh, uh, on February the 1st, 2020, there will be a mass sighting. I don't think there's going to be a landing now and there will be no meeting mm. unless so suddenly unless something tomorrow happens. something happens. But well, there's a lot going on in the world right now. There is. There I is, mean, yes. you know, you, you have the Australian uh, fires, yeah. which is just terrible in and of itself, uh, not to mention all the political unrest that we have going on. So, you know, maybe maybe there would be some sort of a 
protocol that happens on February 1st. I'm sitting here thinking about February 2nd. Right. Oh, 02. O two, 2020. Oh, yes. It's Super Bowl Sunday. Is it really? Oh, yeah. So <laughs> do you want to make Super Bowl Sunday so, super? It's a Show big, up. <laughs> that's a big bowl. I mean, you know? A big day, so yeah. yeah right. I never thought about Unless that. it's like an Independence Day movie. I don't yeah, want no, that reenactment. No. But, um, no, they want, to know, be, they want to be invited here. They want no, to be invited, invited here. Yes. The Council of Eight the wants eight to be invited ambassadors here. Want to be invited. They're invited. the good guys. They're the good guys. Nothing to fear. Nothing to fear from them, okay. no. I'm sure there are some malevolent, I can't say the word malevolent. Malevolent, yeah. yeah. Well, just like in humans. I yeah, mean, yeah, there's yeah. good humans and bad humans. But so. no, this particular group, and as I have had contact with all eight for 57 years, I'm very comfortable with them. And uh, as I say, I've now met others who are quite prominent uh, that have met this uh, same group as well. So. And what are they doing to advance this um, awareness, if you will? The, the institute, pe okay, the well, institute the, is one of I was them, asked right? to contact various groups, okay. and all those groups are working towards uh, disclosure, uh, post-disclosure, like the Exo Consciousness Group, mm -hmm. the Disclosure Group, the Rama Group from Peru, uh, the Exo Politics Group, uh, the Contact and Conscious uh, Research Institute now with Ray Hernandez, and he has a, a new book coming out in May, I believe, yes. with all the leading scientists uh, contributing a chapter, and he's uh, including some experiences within that book, and they're contributing chapters and as well. And you're one of them. I, he has asked me, and I have submitted a chapter, whether he'll include it or not, I don't know. Uh, Oh, I have a good feeling. We'll I wait and see. Well. But what he's doing, he's bringing these leading scientists together with the experiences and bringing the two together. But I know that, he told me this, that he was asked to do that by his ET guides. Oh. So there are many guides out there, and I'm probably one of the first that's actually speaking out about it because I was asked to. If right. I hadn't been asked to, I wouldn't have said anything. Well, being, yeah, and you're, you're being led here. Yeah. And, and you and I have met... Not I, because of coincidence. No, no. Because I, of synchronicity. I find that that uh, I, uh, in fact, I was asked to go to a MUFON meeting mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago in Orlando by Ort, and I'm driving down there, and I'm saying to him, I don't really want to go. <laughs> I'm not really interested in going. I said, but if I'm going, I'd like to meet people that will help me on my journey. I went down there, and from that meeting, I met Dr. Melanie Barton, mm -hmm. and then through that, I met uh, Kathy, Kathy Martin. Kathy Martin, yeah, okay? right. And she's a, a lovely researcher, lady. a lovely lady. And, and then we met at UFOCon. Right, yes, we so did. So that was it, cool. It's all been linked together. Yes. Uh, and uh, in fact, Kathy's endorsed the book now. She about, has, yeah, right nice. here on the back very cover. Nice in fact, Kathy, that. thank you so much for that. And this book, I can't say enough good things about this book, Kevin. This book is such a fantastic read. Uh, absolutely recommend getting this book. Uh, it's found on the BMK Publishing website. It's also on Amazon. It's on your website as well. Can, can you give us that website real it's, quick? It's uh, www.kevinjamesbiggs.com. Wonderful. And this book is so good. It's It shares uh, Kevin's entire story and in fact I have a little bit of surprise for our studio audience all of you are going to get a complimentary copy of this book so. <laughs> yeah this is great Kevin's going to sign it for each one of you and uh, we, we couldn't be more pleased to have this book uh, as part of the BMK publishing company and part of the UFO woman show and uh, you know we just have a lot going on it's a new year it's 2020 uh, new vision right perfect vision and we don't have long to wait till February the 1st and I will be in uh, New York uh, at that weekend. Oh, you're uh, going to be in New York on yes, February 1st. I'm meeting a producer and a film crew up there. Uh, so mm. if anything transpires, we'll catch you on tape. You're going to capture it on tape. It, then you got to come back it here. It may just be another mass sighting. I don't know, but we'll, <laughs> we'll be there. We'll see what happens. They, well, they, if they, you capture something, you got to come I'll back come on back. my show. I'll come back. I'll Absolutely. Come back. Yeah. And, and what a coincidence, or not, that you're going to be in New York City at that time that, that your ETs had told you was a significant yeah, date. Yes. Uh, you know, certainly we're all hoping here on the UFO Woman Show that the protocol does get in place and uh, they are, you know, going to proceed with that. That yes. would be great. Well, let's wait and see. As you say, I'm sure our governments already have a protocol in place, but we need to know that publicly that, that they are there. And then we, as the uh, eight ambassadors, they can ask for uh, to meet. Great. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for being on our show. We really enjoyed having you. The book and everything that you shared with us today was just fantastic. I am Melissa Kennedy. Thank you for watching the UFO Woman Show. Until next time, keep looking up.